Welcome to Picks with the Professor, the podcast where a real statistics professor and Jake gives you sports betting tips. I am Professor Sides. You can follow me on Twitter at Professor Sides. You can follow my friend Jake on Twitter at my friend underscore Jake. Find all of our picks there. Today is Tuesday, February 8th, 2022, and this episode covers today's best college basketball bets. In case you're new here, I built a mathematical model that predicts what the spread and total should be for every Division I college basketball game. That information, along with a graded A, B, or C pick for each of today's games, is available in the Google Sheet linked in the show's description. A picks are the ones I love love B picks are the ones I like and C picks are the leans. However, please remember that good and bad variants will occur. So as much as I'd like to say the model will be profitable each and every day, that is an impossible reality for any gambler. I will say yesterday was one of those good variance yeah. days, right? I would say that spiel at the yeah. beginning. Yeah. And and, and it, it goes both ways, right? Saturday, the A picks just completely fell on their face. Last yeah. night, the totals just rocked it 10 and one on the B totals. Like, it, oh. like I, always, I always say this for a reason, right? We, we can, we have to, enjoy the good variance understand the bad variance will happen it's about the totality of it right i'm excited about last night but obviously there's no way that totals are going to go 10 and 1 every night as much as i'd love for that to happen um apex also went three and one of course i picked the one loser for the a plus play of the day um but apex are now five and one the last two days so that is good i went five and oh in the game breakdown yesterday so yeah a really good day for me yesterday jake we were talking about this pre-show right we were talking about this pre-show, right? At least when one of us has a bad day, the other one has a good day to bring it up. So, yeah. you know, it, it, as long as yeah. one of us is rocking, it, it makes us feel better as a whole, right? Yeah, yeah. Thank God for Virginia Tech because I think I went O for the world besides them. That was yeah. just rough. I know, some of them were like Duke just didn't show up, and yeah. so like they just never had a chance there. But I mean, this absolutely dumb ending in the Arizona Arizona State game where the guy gets yeah. a T, and then and and. You know, they're up 20. The guy gets a tee. That turns into four, so it's down to 16. They get another bucket and then a tip-in dunk with, like, two seconds left. Well, and and on that one, I thought the game – I thought it was a push because I, I – I was like half watching it because I was watching, you know, Texas Kansas was such a great ending at the same time. Yeah, oh, that was a incredible uh, game. But I, so I had Arizona, Arizona State on my other screen. I thought the game was over because I, I, I could be wrong. I have to go back and look at the time on this, but I thought Arizona State got that last two. Um, with under 30 seconds to play. So I was just assuming that Arizona was going to dribble it out and it was going to end 14. And then I, I look I look back and Arizona State's running down the court scoring. And I was like, what just happened? I thought the game was over. Well, you know, just a you wild, wild. Or bench players in and they launch shots when they get a chance. Can't blame them because I, I did the same. And, that, and I think and I did see that the Arizona State cleared the bench with like 40 seconds to go or whatever. So I, I guess that was what happened. They put the walk-ons on and they took a shot yeah. and uh, – yeah, it, it, that's those big numbers, right? You just you just never know. It, it's one of those things where I, I really hesitate when you get over, you know, 11 maybe. When you get above that, it's always hard to be too confident in either direction on those because you just never know what stupid thing's going to happen in the last minute and, and, and which side you're going to be on, whether it's the lucky side or the unlucky side. It's just yeah. want, want bunkers yeah, that, in there. That one hurt. North Texas missing by a bucket, and then Kansas yeah. just falling apart at the end of the game. Man, that just – I took it in the teeth last night, but it's all right. You know, everybody yeah, yeah, that, back yeah, today. They, yeah, they do. Back today, yes, yes. That Kansas ending was wild. I thought they had that. Uh, Texas shoots horribly from three. Game cruises oh. over, like we talked about yesterday. Uh, but I mean, Kansas really, you know, really snatched v- defeat from the jaws of victory on really that did. game last night. Yeah. Um, so it was. Texas, it was. In- as I say, I think Texas made what three threes and two of them banked in. I think or, or to a, one of them banked in and the other one was that end of half, like guys falling away, running, you know, like I think it, I think it switched in, but it was also a really low probability shot. Uh, yeah. I mean, just bonkers game there. A lot of fun. If you weren't invested or a lot of fun, if you had the over, if you, uh, if you had a side on that one, it was, you were, if you had either side, you weren't happy in that game. You either weren't happy with the result or if you had Texas, you weren't happy watching the whole game feeling like if they could just hit a three, you know, that sort of thing. So if you had Kansas or Texas, I feel like you were frustrated that whole game, no matter how it ended. Um, Before we get to today's slate, a reminder, please like and subscribe, follow Ray, all those things. We appreciate them and they help us out greatly. Drop a comment if you're on YouTube. We love those. We try to respond to as many as we can. Tonight, we've got a bunch of interesting games here starting off 6 p.m. 
uh, Eastern Time, 5.30 Central, a little bit of an earlier tip, Marquette at UConn. UConn is a six-point favorite. The total is 140 and a half. I'm taking over that number. The model thinks it should be 142 and a half. UConn's been an over team all year. Marquette, I am 4-0 when I have an edge on their over. I don't think that's enough points. Uh, Marquette, obviously a great defense, but that leads to a lot of quick buckets when they do that. It's not like their great defense is that suffocating um, Virginia slow it down style. It's that pressure, you know, a lot of quick buckets off of that. And sometimes that overpressure leads to quick buckets the other way. So I think there should be a lot of points in this one. As for the side, uh, Marquette has just been obviously rolling, and so it's a little tougher for me to get a feel there. I never really know exactly am I are the numbers adjusting quick enough or not. So as a, from a math standpoint, it's tough for me to say either direction on this one. Jake, you do have a pick on the side. What's your take? Yeah, I'm taking Marquette with the points. I'm, I'm not sure where all this respect coming for UConn is. I know they started off good this year. I think they're what uh, Auburn's only loss, and but that was a double overtime. But really, since they came off that COVID pause, and I think I mentioned this in the Villanova game, they've only been beating up the bottom tier of the Big East. So this this will be – they may might be able to pull, uh, prove me wrong, but they're just not that great offensively. Um, I mean, Cole is really, really good. But after that, it's kind of hit or miss. And then um, Akik, I'm not exactly sure how to say his name, but uh, it's questionable for night, and he, he's a starter, and he didn't play – Last game, and now he's uh, and they got drilled by Villanova. So then you bring it in, a, it's a forward that's out, and you've got to have a matchup for Justin Lewis because he's just absolutely incredible for Marquette. And when UConn won, they, they had a huge game out of nowhere out of Martin and uh, Marcel, the guy that led in scoring against Villanova, did not play. So I, I really think this game flips on its head. I think Marquette has a good chance to win this outright. I just I don't quite understand where this respect UConn's getting in, in this game and in the Villanova game. Yeah, it, it is interesting. Um, uh, UConn's a team that I feel like I haven't seen as much of. I, I've seen a lot of Marquette. We've picked on a lot of their games. Um, UConn, I, I, the number surprised me. Uh, my number makes it pretty close, though. So it's one of those things where I'm just like, wow, what am I not seeing with my eyes that the math's picking up on? So I'm, I'm kind of in that same boat. I don't really know, but my number's kind of like UConn a little bit, too. I, I just was assuming this would be closer to three, not six. So it, it's a little surprising to me, but the math's picking something up. I just I just don't know what. I will say um, I, I don't want to play against Marquette at this point. I've played against Marquette too many times. It hasn't worked. I don't want to do that at this point, at least until you know they really um, really fall flat on their face. So I'm, I'm happy taking a total in this game and staying away from the Marquette fade um, for that one. Another one that should be really interesting, maybe a little bit of an under-the-radar game here tonight. Uh, Ohio at Toledo. That's a 7 Eastern, 6 Central start. Toledo is a four-point favorite. Toledo had their way with this Ohio team on the road last time out. I don't think it'll be quite as much of a blowout this time. That was a little bit surprising. Toledo just could not miss from three. I think put up about 90 points. Uh, But I'm still backing the Rockets here. Toledo minus four. The model thinks it should be five. So it's a B pick for me. I am five, two, and one on A or B Toledo plays, two and O on A or B Ohio fades. So the model seems to nail these teams pretty well. And I think there's no reason not to take Toledo. I think they get a nice, easy victory here at home against a good Ohio team, though. So it's not one that I think they're going to just run them out of the building. But I think they've got too much for Ohio. Jake, what's your opinion? Yeah, I'm I'm with you with this Toledo team. They're six and two as a home favorite against the spread, so they do very well at home. They are the twelfth ranked free throw shooting team. They, so that's with these close games, that that's something you got to pay attention to, especially if it gets like like we said under that seven number. That that could be the difference. Um, but this should be a fun game to watch if you if you can find time to watch it in between the other big games of the night. Um, Sears and Carter for Ohio and uh, Ryan Rollins and JT Shoemate are just incredible one-two punches on either team. And both are averaging, funny enough, 20 and 15, like respectively. So both guards are averaging 20 and both big guys are averaging 15. So it's it should be uh, just a fun, like, heavyweight kind of boxing match, just throwing punches and last one standing wins kind of deal. Um, but, I mean – but this Toledo team's been riding hot before laying that egg out on the road at Ball State. They won eight in a row. Um, so I, I really like 
really like this Toledo team because they take care of the ball. This was an outstanding stat. In the last three games, they're averaging four turnovers like wow. total. Like in, that's not like, a lot. That's, that's, yeah. So that, that gives you plenty of chances to, to win to win a game. So I, I'm feeling very confident about this Toledo team. Yep, a couple of great nuggets you talked about there, right? In a tight game, if you're not turning the ball over there, you're not giving the other team free possessions. That's important. And the free throw percentage, like you talked about, that's a great nugget because it's minus four, right? If, if it's Toledo uh, a minus 12, minus 13 against a weaker team, the free throws may not come into play, right? Or if they're an underdog, it may not come into play because they may not be the ones shooting those free throws late. But that is great that we have a little bit of confidence that if they're up three late, they're up five late, something like that, and fouls start happening, that we have a better chance of staying outside of that number. Um, so some great nuggets there. The reason that game might be a little bit under the radar, though, again, if you have an extra screen or you can, I think that'll be a fun one, is these next two games we're going to talk about. Auburn at Arkansas is the first one, 7 Eastern, 6 Central, same time slot there. Auburn is a two-point road favorite with a total of 149. Uh, the model makes us a pick so I'm taking the two points with Arkansas at home as a B pick. I think Auburn's been flirting with disaster, especially on the road. If you check out their home road splits, Auburn has just not been as good of a team on the road as they have been at home. That holds true for every team. Exactly how much is team dependent is a little bit kind of up in the air. I think there's some people of different philosophies. But at, at this point, we know that in general college teams, they just don't play as well on the road. That happened, That hurts more at the college level than it does at the professional level. Uh, there's various reasons for that. And so I think on the road, I think I like Arkansas. If you're looking at Moneyline, I like plus odds there. I think this is a coin toss game. This is our disagree game, though. So drop a comment uh, in the comment section. Uh, see whose side you're on uh, after you listen to uh, Jake give his side of this story. Jake, what do you got? See, I, I'm riding Auburn because Arkansas can't shoot the three ball. And if Walker Kessler is playing his normal standards, where I think he ranks third in the nation in blocks, there's just not a lot of easy buckets around there because he just – Swat, swats everything and, ch and changes an untold number of shots because nobody's really found a way to track that. But it's unreal the presence he has when he's not in foul trouble and, and playing up to his just normal game. And then on top of that, Jabari Smith, Arkansas just doesn't have a matchup for him. So I expect him to come to play since in that Georgia game, he was, he was non-existent really. And so I think those two guys, I mean, are enough to get cover the small number. I mean, I think it'll be a tight game, and it's going to go either way. But I'm, I lean Auburn just because they've got those two guys, and JD Note is just not going to be enough to carry Arkansas to to a victory, in my opinion. I think that they just don't have enough there with him, and they don't have another like taller, longer guy to go against either Kessler or Jabari Smith. Yes, yeah, so like I said, drop a comment there. See, uh, let us know which side you're on, if you're with me or if you're with Jake on that one. It should be a fantastic game. Um, it probably, you know, a lot of points should come down to the wire. Um, should be a really fun one there. And then at the same time, we've got a loaded early slate, the first of two big, big 10 games. Uh, we've got Wisconsin at Michigan State. Michigan State is a four and a half point favorite with a total of 140. I've got a B pick under 140. The model thinks it should only be 138. I don't have anything remarkable to say about this one. The only nugget I will say is that Wisconsin's uh, two main scores, you know, struggling a little bit as of late to score. If either one of them has trouble really getting going, this feels like a game that's going to be pay played at a little bit of a slower pace and a little bit fewer points. If both those guys get going like they can, this total might be in trouble, but they haven't really, neither one of them have done much uh, in the last few games. And so as long as both of them don't come out on fire, I like this game under in what should be a really good matchup here. Jake, which side are you on? I'm, I'm riding this Michigan State team. They are a very good shooting team. They, they rank, I think, well, super high on three-point percentage. I think it's almost 41 at home or maybe a little over 41. And they shoot – their free throws very well. They score very well. They've got the longer athletic guards with Gabe Brown and Max Christie to kind of make Brad Davidson and uh, Johnny Davis have some trouble. And in their previous matchup, Johnny Davidson went for 25, but it was a very inefficient 25. 
And then Brad Davidson had to have an incredible shooting night. I think he missed four shots all night. He hit six threes. And I don't think that gets to happen again. And that was – and Michigan State won that game, and I won it by 12 still. So, like – and that was at Wisconsin, which is an incredibly hard place to play. Right. Um, so, I think coming, coming home – that the shooting for uh, Wisconsin, I don't think Brad Davidson does it again. I know Tyler Wall didn't play, but I don't think he is a 12 point difference maker at home. So I think Michigan State covers this on, uh, at home with the minus four or four and a half that it is now, just because they out, they outshoot them and outpace them. Yeah, yeah. And of course, Wall, you know, not a bad player, but with Wisconsin's depth, he probably only is going to be a one or two point move at most to the spread. It's not going to be, you know, he's not a, a, as much of a difference maker as those other two guys you talked about. So it sounds like we're both on the same side there with thinking, hoping that uh, Jetty Davis and Brad Davidson, uh, you know, don't have great nights, keeps the total under, gets Michigan State an easy victory there, and then we can both walk away winners. And for our last Big Ten game of the night here, Illinois at Purdue, this one should also be a fun one. Uh, the model thinks the total should be about 150, so I'm taking over 148. I talked about this Saturday on our live show when we got a question about Purdue. Um, we've talked about it probably once a week we talk about it. I take a Purdue over I'm 11 and four on those Purdue over edges three and one on Illinois over edges so when I like over on them it's gone well also the number keeps creeping up the number is starting to catch up I just don't think it's there yet this Purdue team they play fast they score they don't play defense I, I don't see any reason I, it's almost like I feel like a broken record right it's like Purdue's playing like take the over and it's not going to work every night again there's no hundred percent there's no locks right I'm, I'm being upfront and honest with you here Anybody tells you there's this lock that's for sure going to happen, unless it's like the game is going to get played or like over 10 points for the whole for both teams, yeah. right? There are no locks, but the Purdue overs keep working. I don't see any reason to stop. I'm riding that over train again here with the Boilermakers. I just don't think the number's quite quite caught up yet. Jake, which side are you on? I'm taking Illinois plus the points here, but I love the overplay. Both these teams are just incredible offenses. Um, the reason I'm taking Illinois is I think Kofi is going to have a better game. He's going to be more determined and stay out of foul trouble in this one. And, I mean, I still think Purdue pulls it off at home just because they're very hard to beat at home. But the way Illinois is playing right now, the way they're shooting with Trent Frazier and Carbello playing well, uh, Williams and Grandison, that they, when they have Kofi in the game and they can stick those four guys around him, it is – nearly impossible for a good defensive team to cover them, let alone this Purdue team who just yeah, but, and they're not playing a good defensive out. team today. <laughs> yeah. Opts out of that end of the floor. And yeah, yeah. And I mean uh, it's this Illinois team is huge, but there's extra motivation here for these teams. This is for they're right now tied for first, I guess is the way to say it. I think they're a half Purdue's a half game back, but owns the tiebreaker over Illinois currently. So if Purdue wins, they're jumping in the first. And that could be a big difference come like March and all, the, and the, obviously in the Big Ten tournament. So this is a huge, very important game for both teams. And I think they're going to go at it. And I think it's going to be close. I think it's going to be under five and go tit for tat and possibly another double overtime kind of game like we yeah. had at Illinois, which would make that over really safe. So right. I, I'm leaning Illinois because I just think it's too many points for Purdue to cover against this really, really good Illinois team. Yeah, I, I wouldn't mind some of the earlier games going double overtime. This being late game, like I really just, I, I'd rather just in regulation. I got to go to bed, <laughs> but it yeah. should be a good one. Unlike you, I, I think it should be a close. Just eyeballing it, I'm a little surprised the numbers that big. I don't. Um, you know, you don't ever want to play against Purdue, like you said, at home, but you're not playing against them to win at this point. You know, like you said, Purdue could still win a tight one. It should be a relatively close game, and Illinois um, has a lot to like there, so that makes a lot of sense. I, I like where your head's at. And that leads us to our buzzer beaters, your exclusive pod content. I've got the A-plus play of the day, 9 Eastern, 8 Central, Central Florida. 
minus one and a half versus Wichita State. I've got Central Florida by four. I like them to get that victory there. As long as it's not by one point, we are good. The best B side, I'm taking South Carolina plus 11 in a big game at home against Kentucky. That is a six central start. I've liked Kentucky a lot this year. We've talked about how good they are. At this point, the numbers, you can't really respect them anymore. Like their numbers are already through the roof. At some point, there is a time to sell. Tonight's the night that I'm selling on Kentucky. It's a bad spot for them on the road. Uh, I think Kentucky wins by single digits. I think they go get a road win by seven, eight or something like that. And they're happy. They, they don't have any reason to go out there and win, you know, by, you know, 13 or 15 or something like that. South Carolina is a respectable team. So I think they can at least make it um, quasi interesting there at home. So that's the best B side. Uh, every dog has its day, a late game for you here, 10 PM Eastern nine central. I'm taking Cal state Fullerton, a short, Plus 105 underdog. That's a B pick at Long Beach State. I think the wrong team is favored in that one. And then my last one, I've got a plug your nose and play anyway spot. 7 p.m. 6 Central. Eastern Michigan plus 13 and a half. That's a B pick at Buffalo. I've talked about this before on pod. I, this Buffalo team isn't the same as years past. I've done pretty well fading them. I think this is another good spot. Buffalo gets to win at home, but I just see it being tougher for them to win by 15, 17, something like that. This isn't the Buffalo teams of years past that could just shoot the you know lights out of the building, that sort of thing. And so as, if they're not hitting their threes, uh, which they haven't, again, been great at this season, then I think Eastern Michigan can at least make it respectable and get a nice little 10 point loss there. We can get to the window uh, with all those points in our back pocket. Jake, what are your buzzer beaters? So I'm, I'm going with Creighton minus seven and a half at home. They are a much better team at home and Butler is improving, but they're not good enough to cover this at going to Creighton. And then I really am all in on this Wyoming team. I think they are very dangerous and a short line at home minus one and a half and Maldonado is just a matchup nightmare as a taller point guard who posts up and then he's top five in the nation in assist. I think this Wyoming team is something, something everybody needs to keep an eye on, especially as we get later and closer to the tournament. Yeah. Wyoming's been a fun team to watch this year, especially like you said with Maldonado, he can do a little bit of everything. Uh, he yeah. can get down and rebound because if you're, if you're playing man to man against him, he's got a huge height advantage. Like you said, yeah. uh, he, he can get inside the paint and when he does, cause the height, he's not getting swatted away. I mean, he's, he's a lot of fun to watch. So um, yeah, that should be a good one tonight. And that's all we've got for you today. Thanks again for tuning into another episode of picks with the professor A reminder, check out that Google sheet for all picks and totals for every game today. If you haven't done so yet, click that subscribe button. We will get you a new episode every weekday of the college basketball season and that live Q and a episode on Saturday, where you can hop into the chat and ask us about any game. We'll shoot from the hip and just let you know what we think. We will see you tomorrow. And until then, remember you can eat your betting money, but please don't bet your eating money.